In the last video, I told you what the Chevy Chef polynomials were and what generating functions are. And we showed you how you could take the recursion formula for the Chevy Chef polynomials and just from the recursion explicitly compute what the generating function was. And this really works for any recursively defined sequence, but we're just using the Chevy Chef polynomials as an example. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can start with this guy and extract explicitly the coefficients. So we're going to get an explicit non-recursive formula from the Chebyshev polynomials just by using like geometric series and binomial theorem and things like that. All right, so let's get started. Uh, first off, let me just kind of ignore the numerator from the get-go. So this 2 minus xt. After we deal with the denominator, we'll multiply everything by this, but for now, let's just kind of focus on the denominator. Right, so we've got 1 over 1 minus xt plus t squared. First thing I'm going to use is the formula for an infinite geometric series. So this is sum from 0 to infinity, xt minus t squared tk. And if you've taken analysis before, you're probably wondering, well, what about convergence and all that stuff and whatnot? The nice thing about these generating functions, well, let's just take this one. If I pick a specific value for x, then this thing has some non-zero gradients of convergence in t. On that open set, I mean, you've got absolute uniform convergence, so you can take limits inside. You can Use the Bini theorem with reckless abandon. I mean, whatever you want to do, you can do it. So the moral of the story is when you're doing this generation function stuff, since all we care about at the end are what are the coefficients equal to, we don't actually care about the convergence of the series itself. You can kind of ignore all those questions that your analysis teacher is going to do to work on. So, all right, so we will not talk about convergence anymore. So the next thing I'm going to do is take this and use the binomial theorem to expand it out. So this is sum from k is 0 to infinity, l is 0 to k, k choose l. And I've got xt to the l, and I've got minus t squared to the k minus l. So if I now I just expand that out. Actually, to make my life easier, I'm going to make one more little change. In retrospect, I probably should have just built the thing backwards, but we're not going to worry about it. Uh, so, first of all, the minus 1, I want to write it first. I've got minus 1 to the k minus l. And for reasons you'll see in a second, I'm going to rewrite the binomial coefficient as k choose k minus l. That'll actually help a little bit in a second. Uh, x is just to the l, and then t is to the l, and then I've got t to the 2k minus 2l. So all together I've got t to the 2k minus l. All right. Well, I would like to do a change of variables at this point. I mean, not the variables, but the indices or whatever. Basically, I want this guy here to just be m at the end of the day. And as it turns out, uh, the k minus l is going to be m, which is why I changed that at the bottom. If you've ever done any change of variables and in multiple intervals and things, you know the worst part of it is figuring out what happens to the boundary conditions. So let me just kind of draw a picture of our sum. We're summing k0 to infinity, so all the way out, but l only goes up to k, so it's kind of, we're summing over all the lattice points in this kind of triangle shaped region here. I really just don't want to mess with Having to figure out where the, how the boundary changes after I do my change of variable. And also, I mean, this is not going to be the only change of variable. A little bit later, I'm going to change m to m plus 1 or something like that. 
And so I don't have to worry about all that. I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to redefine the binomial coefficients. I mean, as they are, they're really only defined in this triangle. So when L and K are both positive and when K is bigger than L is. So everywhere outside here, I'm going to say that the binomial coefficients are zero. So I'm going to say this is zero if either L is less than zero or K is less than zero. And same thing is zero if L is bigger than K and they're both bigger than zero. The reason I'm doing that is because now I can extend this sum instead of just over this triangle. I can extend it over all of Z2. And then I don't have to worry about, oh, how's the shape of my region that I'm summing over changes? I can say, oh, the, the sum's over all of Z2. So uh, just to reiterate, let's grab this. So now I've got sum over just K and L in Z or Z2 if you want to put principles on it, of negative 1 to K minus L. K choose K minus L. X to the L. And T to the 2K minus L. All right, so again, since I really want that to just be an M there, I'm going to say M is 2k minus l and n is k minus l. Uh, to see that's one for one, well, it's pretty easy because you can write down the inverse in that one second. k would be m minus n and l would be m minus 2n. So it's easy to see these two. Substitutions are inverse of each other, so this is a one-to-one -one map from Z2 to itself. So now I've got the sum over n and n of minus 1 to the n. k is n minus n, so m minus n to n. l is n minus 2n, so x to the n minus 2n. And 2k minus L, that's what I call the end. So T to the end. All right. So that's it for what was the denominator in our generating function. The only thing left now is to multiply it by my 2 minus Tx, or I guess Xt is what I had written. Well, the 2, of course, when it multiplies, it's not going to really do anything. When I multiply the xt, let's look just at that part for a second. I'm going to have sum over m and n minus 1 to the n, m minus n to the n. This is now going to be, since I'm multiplying by x, x to the m plus 1 minus 2n, and t to the m plus 1. So it really looks a whole lot like what I had except with m replaced by m plus 1. So this is equal if I just shift m down by 1, sum over m and n, negative 1 to the n. I'm shifting m down by 1, so I get m minus 1 minus n, and then x. Since I shifted it back down, now it's just x to the m minus 2n, e to the m. Okay. So I can combine that together with the, the two guy. So they both have negative 1, x to the m minus 2n, t to the m. The first one's going to have 2 times the original binomial coefficient, and then minus the shifted binomial coefficient. So let's write all that down. So we're going to have sum over m and n. We've got negative 1 to the m. We've got 2 times the original binomial coefficient that we had. And then we're subtracting this one where m got shifted down by 1. And then we've got x to the m minus 2n, t to the m. So really the only thing left is to simplify this 
term in the brackets there. Uh, I kind of just like how the m minus n choose n looks. So I want to rewrite this guy in terms of that. So let's do that right quick. Well, if I take this guy, he's n minus 1 minus n factorial over m minus 1 minus 2n factorial n factorial. At least where it's non zero. I don't really care about where it is zero. So, well, if I want to write in terms of that, that guy is m minus n factorial over m minus 2n factorial n factorial. So, really, the only thing I'm missing, well, I have a, I want an m minus n that I don't have in this factorial over here. So, over m minus n. And same thing on the bottom, I want an m minus 2n that I don't have over here. So here I've got m minus 2n. So the second guy is really just m minus 2n over m minus n times the first guy. So I can pull this first guy out. Uh, let me just leave him up, kind of take that part and leave the rest of it alone for a second. So now I've got 2 this first one minus m minus 2n over m minus n. Of course my 2, erase him that quick, put him over a common denominator. Uh, so I want him over m minus n. So this would be 2m minus 2n. And then when I subtract that I've got Negative 2n minus minus is plus 2n. Those cancel. And then 2m minus m is just m. So that whole thing in parentheses there is just m minus n choose n times. All that's left here is m over m minus n. And if I take that, put it right back up there, that's what we want. So let me close this out All right, one more time. So I've got sum over m and n minus 1 to the n uh, m over n minus n n minus n choose n uh, x to the n minus 2n to the n and that's supposed to be my original Chebyshev generating function which is sum um, of tm x tm m. And the last thing I'm going to do is just think, okay, well, where is this binomial coefficient supported? So this thing is only going to exist, first of all, m has to be bigger than m, which that kind of makes sense for the stop to be positive. The bottom has to be positive, so m has to be bigger than zero. And then n minus n has to be bigger than n, right? So that means m is bigger than 2n. So n is going to be less than or equal to the floor of m over 2. So if I just want that one guy, so I just take one value of m, I get tm of x. It's going to be sum from n is 0, the floor of m over 2, negative 1 uh, to the n, m over n minus n, n minus n choose n, x to the n minus 2.